free. Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. But that's simply what that cemetery says. The point is, when you've got these kinds of questions about what happens in the cemetery, the answer is go talk to the cemetery. So that's my general comment about Martha's Vineyard. Talk about, Mar talk about Martha's Vineyard. Well, uh, all of you, most of you might know that most of the towns all have their own cemeteries that are run by the towns themselves. Um, each town has different requirements, which we just talked about. Some require a residency um, of a buildable lot um, oh. in the town. You know because in Chilmark they tried to put them on because they had beach lots <laughs> and they said you can't do that. Um, and then some of the towns have a, will let non-residents be buried there, but they have a non-resident fee. So if you're interested in a particular cemetery, as Arthur just said, I would talk to that cemetery and find out what those requirements are um, or not. And remember, knowing that there are no rules, you can't say, oh, you can't do that. Yes, they can. They can do whatever they want, right? They're the cemetery, they can pretty much decide. Right. Now, can you, can, we, can you talk about opening fees? So, once again, if the fact that you own the right to be put in the ground doesn't mean that you can get in there, right, without paying a fee. Right. Right? right. And those opening fees, depending, and now if the person's being buried, so if there's a casket that's going into the ground, can you talk about the sure. range of opening fees? Sure. Here? The range of opening fees here on the island are anywhere from $475 to 575 for a casketed remains to be buried here on the island in the cemeteries. Do they charge extra for weekends? I have, I have no towns where they charge. They do. Yeah, they do. See? They do. Oh, you laughed. They do. Not on Saturday, only on Sunday. But only on Sunday. <laughs> they charge extra? You think they get a discount on Sunday? No, no, no. And then for the interment of an urn in a cemetery lot is anywhere from $50 to $200, which we talked about earlier. Okay, so the fees vary, and there, there's no, no rate controls in any of this, right? So these could change. Correct. Individual towns set them. They can change them anytime they want. The fact that you have the right to be buried there, you have no control over any of those numbers. What if your kids yeah. are Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, and then you... Yes, ma'am. Um, I heard of a gentleman who wanted his dog buried in his grave, and the cemetery said, no way. Well, when Muffy died, he had the dog buried at night in his lot. <laughs> and the cemetery officials found out about it, and they went and disinterred the dog and oh. took it to the master's house. <laughs> you, you heard a sad story about a dog that, that didn't find his home where he wanted it next to his master. That's, and I, and so, it was, so I don't think, that's an interesting question. I wonder if there were Board of Health controls on whether animals can be buried in a human cemetery. I bet there are. I bet the Board of Health can control that. I don't know. Right? I'm sure that the cemetery can. Right? But I bet the Board of Health can too. Can could actually control for that. Yes, sir. When it comes time to place a stone on a plot, are there special fees or permits that have to be acquired to place a stone on a plot? So if you're placing a stone on some kind of a memorial plaque or something on the plot, is, is the, are there extra fees as far as the cemetery is concerned? You're not talking about the cost of actually buying the plaque. The I don't think that any of the cemeteries charge a fee for you to put a monument on or marker on a grave site. Um, they have, each cemetery has their own regulations as to how many markers can go on a grave site and what the dimensions can or can't be. Um, but, you know, that's how that works. But they don't, par they don't charge a, a fee for just letting you do that. That's my understanding. Okay. Uh, yes. See, I knew there'd be a lot of questions on no. it. Yes, ma'am, and then you, ma'am, and then you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So there's a, who gets the opening fee charge, number one, and is there also a closing fee? No. No. That would be cool. The question is, who gets the opening fee charge? And is the answer that you, it usually gets funneled through you? Yeah, right? we usually collect. We usually collect and distribute that money. It's referred to um, with us. It's referred to as a cash advance item. We take. We charge the families that amount, and we pay that amount out to the person that does that job. Whether it's flowers, whether it's certified copies of the death certificate, whether it's a clergy honorarium for the person that's going to do the service, um, whether if a family has a sort of flowers for them. So the town or the cemetery, does, the private cemetery, doesn't get that? Some of them do, some of them don't. It depends on who's doing the actual uh, digging of the grave. 
Yes, ma'am. On the island, you don't have to have the container to put the casket in that you pay separately for? No. On the island, you have to have the container that you put the casket in. What you're referring to is... What you're referring to is either referred to as a, a burial vault or a grave box. Um, all of the island cemeteries here on the island require that. So you do. You do. That's a, that's a different thing. That's correct. Okay. And how much do, do vaults yeah. cost? Uh, $950. And, and is there more than one casket that goes in a vault? or is that No, it's just one. Wow. That's a cement cost. Correct. The other part of my question was going back to the dog. Um, if they've been cremated, because they're already cremated, you have the ashes. I've been saving my doggies for that to go with me. So that means that the dog's ashes can't go in with you? Are you so is, so is, your, is that your true? question is, okay. if, you, if your children told the cemetery that your dog's ashes were in the little thing with your ashes, yeah. would they say that was bad? The answer is going to be probably yes. Don't tell. Don't tell. Don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, ma'am. That was a question. So, seven, so we'll, and we'll have some general time for questions at the end. So, prepaid funerals. A big, big topic of conversation. Can we just kind of talk about, I, I'll give you the kind of two obvious ones that I regularly hear, you know, from folks who say, because in, in, some many cases I suggest that people do this. So the question is, what if the funeral home goes out of business? And what happens if you move? Right? So can you talk about prepaids in general sure. and how people figure that out? And what happens if you go out of business and what happens if you move? Sure. Uh, probably what most of you have heard with prepaid funerals and things like that are all of the horror stories that you've seen on the news and things like that. So I can explain to you how it works here on the island. Um, in Massachusetts, we're regulated if a family prepays any money to us, it does not go into the general fund of the funeral home. We're not allowed to do that under state law. We'll lose our license and we don't do that. What we do is when we accept money from a family, we, um, we use what, we refer, what is called the New England Funeral Trust and the money is deposited in the Cambridge Trust Company up in, up in Cambridge. Um, and it's placed into an individual trust account with the, whoever the person's account it's for with their name and their social security number on it. The only way that we have access to that money is for us to send up a certified copy of the death certificate when that person passes away. Um, some of the advantages of doing pre-need or pre-planning in that way. Um, if you ever go into any long-term care with the state, which I'm sure you'll talk about in a moment, um, they, they, want, they will allow you to set aside money for your funeral, funeral expenses as long as it's placed into an irrevocable trust account, which you can talk more about that. An irrevocable trust account um, simply means from our terms is that we cannot give you the money back once it's placed into that account. Um, if you decide to prepay your funeral expenses and it goes into an irrevocable trust account and you move to Florida you, or you don't like us or we go out of business, you can transfer that money to another funeral home of your choice and you're allowed to do that under the state law and there's no penalties or anything like that for, with that. That is the only way you can get it by transferring it. If it's an irrevocable trust, I believe you can go to a, a court of competency, something like that. There's a big long term for it, and a judge has to rule that yes, you can get that money back. The 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 everything you just said was right, <laughs> <laughs> and that was really good. And, and the advantage, and and so if I if I've done this, and, and the way that I figure out how much I'm going to pay you. Right? How do I do that? Well, we'd sit down, we'd set up an appointment, we'd sit down and we'd sort of talk about what, you, what you're thinking of doing. Um, we have a general price list, which is one of the other parts of the Federal Trade Commission, which lists all of the services that we have on there. And we sort of go through that as to what you're thinking of for services, and we come up to, with a total price of what that's going to cost. Oftentimes, families have that money set aside, um, and they'd like to prepay their funeral expenses. Um, the advantages to doing that is the long-term care with the nursing home, the state cannot touch that money, it's set aside for that and it will stay there for that. The other advantage that some funeral homes do, and we do it, is we guarantee all of the funeral home charges, including the merchandise, the funeral expenses. The only thing that we don't guarantee is the cash advance items, the opening of the cemetery, which is a smaller amount of money. That still um, accumulates interest in the trust account, um, but the funeral home expenses are guaranteed. We assume the responsibility that the interest will keep up with the rising cost of funerals. If it doesn't, we assume that responsibility of that part of it. And that's appealing to some people to do that. They have the money set aside now. They know what they want for services. It's only going to go up in the future, as we just talked about. Um, so they oftentimes decide to do that. So that's right. That's the deal. 
that they get the, you know, the money gets set aside, gets put into separate accounts. The, the Department of Consumer Affairs, actually, in Massachusetts, um, regularly audits these accounts to make sure the money's really still there. Um, and and, and it's, so it is heavily regulated. Uh, the control is that those accounts can, can get, can't get tapped into for general expenses, right? And if the funeral home goes out of business, the money can move wherever you say that it's going to move. Um, and the, the basic deal is, once you need it, they're often referred to as pre-need accounts, once the need is there, the services that are on that a la carte list, the prices of those services stay, stay where they were. You know, you're not getting the new inflated price, except, as, as Michael pointed out, as to those things over which they don't have control. So if the cemetery, if, they, if they've done an estimate of $800 for the grave opening, and it turns out at that point that the cemetery is charging $2,000, right. that's not what they're responsible for, right? They have to, they, those are the out of, but, but as to all of their costs for the showings, for the casket, et cetera, those costs can be all frozen in. Okay, any questions on any of that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm just curious, if the funeral home goes out of business, who notifies the person where the money is and what will happen to it? Does the funeral home or does the state? So the question is, if the funeral home goes out of business, who notifies the, the families right. where the money is? And I guess my related question to that would be, do, when you do a prepaid contract and you get the check, do you tell the folks right off the bat with kind of where the money is? Yeah, it's all explained in everything we do. We tell you exactly where the money's going. But if you go out of business, who notifies the family? The New England Funeral Trust is required to notify that whoever's listed as that person that receives paperwork each year okay. on that, just so you know that it's in that money's in there safe and secure. So it would automatically generate it to you. So once a year you get some some kind of notice from the from the bank saying the money's still here. Is there now with that with that bank also? I never thought to look at this. Do the regulations require that bank if you go out of business to notify everybody that you just went out of business? So I, that they, I believe that they do. That's an that piece of interesting. We haven't question. gone out of business, so. I mean, what about the 